you about next for Workbench. Tomorrow I have another talk about METAR, and I'll have more time to uh, discuss details. Um, so uh, the next for Workbench, let's do this. Next for Workbench is a workflow development environment uh, because we think that the language is not enough uh, because tools matter. Um, our focus is on productivity. We want uh, intelligent auto completion. We want semantic error detection. Uh, we need to be able to reuse existing workflow and processes uh, to make it very easy for biologists to actually be able to do that when they need to process data. Uh, we need to make it easy for bioinformaticians to develop uh, robust workflows. And uh, we, we, would like, um, we would like to have uh, implicit parallelism and scalability because when you work with very large data sets, that's not an afterthought. That has to be part of the platform. And for that, we rely on Nextflow, uh, which is a, a, a language uh, developed uh, by the Notre Dame lab in Barcelona. And Paolo uh, Di Tommaso is here. I think you have a poster 29, perhaps? Yeah, so you can learn more about that language. Uh, but what the Workbench is providing you is, in fact, a, a complete uh, integrated development environment for Nextflow. And what we provide is, um, is this user interface. Uh, this is not text, actually. It is a, an actual user interface. And you can see a, an example of photo completion here. Uh, if I zoom in, you can actually start to read what's, uh, what's listed there. Uh, we have instant error highlighting. We have a, a full type system. Uh, so we can tell you when you're trying to connect inputs uh, of a different type that the process expects, and that's going to be right uh, there, highlighted on the screen. You don't actually have to run it to get an error. Uh, so you can do a lot of development just using the interactive editor, and uh, you will save in a lot of time, actually. Uh, remember, our focus is on productivity. Um, so an example of a process uh, so this uh, is exactly what you'll see in the IDE. Uh, we have a name for the process. There are inputs uh, with their types, uh, outputs with their types. Here is a simple example uh, where we assemble uh, a URL uh, using echo, and we take the output of this and we put it in this output variable. That's a feature of Nextflow. We just uh, expose it in the IDE in a, in a way that's very intuitive. Uh, you have a, an intention on this to actually turn on this redirect uh, from the output to the variable. Um, so that's a simple process, but we can do a lot more than this. Uh, here's an example where we have a process that relies on the Docker container for the running environment. Uh, you have a button to pull the image to your laptop as you're developing to make it easier. Uh, we provide a full ID for Docker as well. If you want to create the Docker files in the workbench, you can do that. And inputs, outputs. Uh, here we have a declarative way to specify um, software and data resources that your workflow will need to run, that this process will need to run. In this case, we say that we need the Callisto index corresponding to this organism, this version of this build on this version of Ensemble. And this is all declarative. And when you generate this to Nextflow, we actually generate all the code that's needed to download the Ensemble transcripts from Ensemble, download Callisto, compile it, build the index, the transcript index, and actually run. Uh, so when the script starts here, it's actually ready to start getting data from Google Cloud in this case and uh, stage it on the machine. And here you see that we're referring to transcripts index. Those are the indices that uh, have been prepackaged in this Docker image. In this case, we can also prepackage things in the Docker image. If you need clinical applications and you want to really freeze the workflow to have everything under control and well behaved, then you can do that as well. So this supports auto completion. Um, so the system is open source and it is built with open source software. Uh, we built uh, the Nextflow Workbench uh, IDE on top of the meta programming system that's developed by JetBrains. We leverage Nextflow as the execution language and we use Elastic Cluster to provision clusters in the cloud. So in terms of execution, what you can do is uh, three things. As you develop, you're likely to want to do it on your laptop or desktop and you can do that. Because of Docker, you actually have uh, portability. If you can develop the workflow there, then you know it will work on your university lab cluster or in Google Cloud. So we have those different options. And this is the other language we offer. Um, that's a very simple user interface to let you configure 
a given cluster. So we use that for teaching when we teach next floor workbench and we teach to biologists who have some common line experience. We do that in about two hours. And in two hours, we show them how to build a, a cluster to align reads with Callisto and uh, obtain a combined matrix that they can then use in meta R. Um, what you see here is just the options that you want to specify for your cluster. So in this case, we, we're building a cluster with four nodes. And uh, if you press this button, it's actually going to ask you to authenticate with Google Cloud. And when you accept, it will create a cluster, install SunGrid engine on it with Elastic Cluster, add Docker to that, and then you're actually ready to get the, the IP of the cluster, the front end, and then plug it in into the, the config for next to Warbench. And you can now submit to the, to the cloud. So we really have portability from laptop to the cloud. And um, I think, uh, I mean, find me for a demo. Uh, I'm, I'm, I list a few events, uh, a few things, a few demos during the, the buff. Um, next to Warbench is not a standard. I think it's better. Okay, because my view of standards is that they are needed to coordinate among people when the changes are slow and difficult. That is their primary utility. You need to freeze a standard, a specification, and make it a standard so that everybody can develop towards it because development is slow. In, in the case that I'm talking about, we, I think we don't need standards because we have language composition. We have language extension that is almost trivial. And I'll illustrate that tomorrow in the meta R talk. Um, so that's why I think standards actually here would just hinder innovation. And all the things I've demonstrated, you know, how you can autocomplete to something that's inside a Docker container, those are examples of innovations that would be really hard to do with a standard because you would first need to convince everybody to, you know, let's put it in and then we can try it. Um, so find me during the buff or uh, for a demo or see the Meta Art talk tomorrow for more examples. Thank you.